In this video, I'm going to be talking about the proportions when you are drawing a profile, so drawing someone from the side. Um, so a lot of the proportions are pretty similar to when you're drawing from the front. Uh, there's just a few different things that we need to keep in mind. So I'm going to just get started with a basic head shape. So I like to start with kind of a circle for the back of the skull and then kind of make a an oval kind of overlapping with it. Uh, and that's generally how I get started with this form. Um, obviously I'm going to just kind of refine things as I go along. Lots of erasing and kind of going back and forth. That's why it's really important to draw lightly at this stage so that you can make changes easily without having to go too far along and realize you can't erase stuff. Um, so draw lightly until you get things in the right spot. Um, what we are going to do first is divide the head into thirds going across. So from the back of the skull to the front. So say this is the front of the skull or the back of it and here is the front. Um, we'll just kind of guesstimate where our thirds are. Pretty close. So your pencil is going to be a really important tool for measuring and kind of figuring out distances of things. So I'm just going to do a couple dotted lines here to give us an idea of our thirds. So we have the skull now divided into thirds. And what's really interesting is the front third is going to contain all of the facial features. So we aren't really going to have any facial features past this line. They're all kind of squished up front here. And you can hear my cat in the background because he's grumpy. He's not in here. <laughs> uh, at this third, towards the back, um, this is really roughly where the ear is sitting. Um, generally, there's a, a, just a little bit of space at the back of the skull where the ear is at. So roughly where the ear is attached is going to be here. The jawline is also starting at this back third. Now that we've divided our head vertically, we're going to be dividing it horizontally now. So just like in a front facing portrait, the eyes are located halfway down from the top of the head, so right in the middle. Um, so we are going to find that center point It's always lower than you think it is. Okay, so halfway. This is right at the top part of the eye, so kind of where the bridge of your nose, the overhang of your brow is going to be sitting. Um, from here, we are going to divide from the eyes to the chin in half. And that is going to be where you, the bottom of your nose is sitting. So, fun thing, this is also kind of where this circle it overlaps, which is where your jawline hits and your ear starts. So this line kind of covers everything. So we've got the bottom of your nose, we've got the bottom of your ear, and it's also going to be where your cheekbone is sitting, which is right in this sort of vicinity. From here, we're going to divide from the bottom of the nose to the chin into thirds. So I'll just kind of eyeball this real quick. Wonderful. So the more you do this, the easier it gets to guesstimate where things are at. So this line right here is going to be the center of your mouth. So where your two lips come together. This point here is kind of the indent of your chin. So the lowest point underneath your lower lip where it kind of sucks in before your chin comes back out again. 
and then we have the bottom of your chin again. Now um, what I'm going to do is kind of roughly block in the forms. So every shape of the profile is pretty different depending on the person. So like the shape of the brow, the forehead, the nose, it's all going to look different depending on who you are drawing. So in this case, I am drawing my husband. Um, so I kind of am just checking angles of how far out things should kind of be sticking from like the tip of the nose to the chin from the forehead. Um, this is just to kind of give me an idea of where I should be headed with things. So, I mean, he's got kind of a longer, more pointed nose, whereas other people might have more of the aquiline nose, where it's more of that sort of bump there, or you might have a tiny little button nose, so it's all going to look pretty different. Another thing to note is, uh, when you're drawing the lips from the side, um, generally the upper lip tends to kind of hang over the lower lip. And this isn't always the case again. Um, sometimes, sometimes if you have more of like an underbite, your lower lip might protrude more than your upper lip. But generally speaking, the upper lip sticks out further. So another fun fact is at this third, the first third here, it's about where the neck begins. the back of the head is not quite as obvious in terms of where it starts and ends, but we can just kind of block things in here. All right, so I have sort of the basics of the head blocked in. Um, from here, we can start doing more of the interior structures. So the eyes, the ears, all that sort of thing. Um, generally, when we are looking at the eyes, um, they tend to line up or at least be pretty close to lining up with the nostril. Um, so oftentimes, if you were to draw a line straight up and down from the nostril at the halfway point, that would be about where the line or where the eye would meet. Um, in the case of my husband, his eyes are a little bit deeper set, so they sit back just a little bit farther. And again, remember this line is the kind of top of the eye. Um, sort of this triangle here between the eye and the nose is really like where we're seeing sort of the eye socket sitting in here. So if I were to draw the eye socket, it's always fun to kind of see what's the skeletal structure underneath. But yeah, the eye socket, the eyeball sits inside of the eye socket. Um, and that's generally where we're going to see a lot more shadows on the face because it's sitting inside of that socket. Um, that's also where we see the cheekbone coming from if we're talking about bones. So there's that orbital bone going around the eye socket, the zygomatic arch, all those good anatomical terms. Um, so this is going to be like roughly where your cheekbone is sitting. 
Um, so for some people that's going to be a lot more prominent, a lot sharper, others it might be a little more shallow um, or rounder. But we'll see that kind of halfway between the eyes and the bottom of the nose is where this cheekbone is going to be laying. And that lines up with the middle of the nose, the middle of the ear, and the eye socket. So I'm just going to erase a little bit of this line work on here. It's getting a little heavy. I just get so excited explaining anatomy. I forget that I have to erase all this anyway so that I can finish the drawing. Um, yep, so we've got the basic eye shape here. Then the ear is going to be sitting in the middle right here. Um, so the front and the back of the ear kind of go at an angle, kind of like a, I don't know, 15 to 20 degree angle, like so. Um, the back of or the bottom of the ear kind of lines up with that jawline. And depending on the shape of the ear, you're going to see, you know, a dramatic curve or maybe more pointed. So everybody's different. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure here. Um, so a lot of times it's good to kind of check to see how much space there is between the ear and the back of the head because depending on the angle you're at, you could see more or less of that. My husband's got kind of pointy ears. So I'm just going to block these shapes in here with the helix. All right, so one of the last things inside the face would be kind of lining things up. So the corner of the mouth kind of sticks out just a little bit past the nose. I tend to draw a slight angle outwards to give me an idea of where things are going. And obviously, depending on if you're smiling or frowning, that's going to kind of change the shape of the mouth. And one of the last things will just be adding in hair. So like pretty much everything else with a face, the hairline is going to be different for every person. Um, just keep in mind that the top of the head is covered with hair. Your hair doesn't sit on top of it, like, you know, it's coming straight out of it. We have the hairline inside of the head and then sitting above the head, depending on how poofy your hair is. So. My husband's got post-workout hair going on right now, so it's sticking out all over the place. But as you can see, we're kind of bringing the hair inside the head. So some people might have kind of a really low forehead. They have a lower hairline. Maybe they are have a, more of a receding hairline. Widow's Peak, I don't know. There's all different shapes that could be happening right now as we're drawing the hair in place. So I'm just going to quickly block this in. And then of course the hair kind of comes behind the ear to form the back of the head. All right, so this would be your basic proportions. Um, just like I mentioned, we'll recap. We'll start by dividing the head shape into thirds, going or er, vertically. So the front third is where all of our facial features are going to be residing. The back third will be where our jawline and our ear begin. Um, once we start going horizontally here, dividing the head in half will be where our eyes are sitting. Um, in half again, from the eyes to the chin would be the bottom of the nose. Then dividing the from the bottom of the nose to the chin into thirds, we've got the um, middle of the mouth and then the indent before the chin comes out. Um, the eyes tend to line up roughly with the nostril, but could be sitting back a little bit further depending on how far your eyes sit into your skull. And 
the corner of the mouth can line up with the eye, whether it's the center in this case or further back into the eye, just depending on the shape of the face and the angle at which the head is tilted. So from here, I am going to just speed things up and do a quick little time lapse to finish this drawing. Thanks for watching, everybody.